I recently got a NVIDIA Jetson Nano to test with the Rico Theta Z1. I'll be testing the USB API and the live streaming. This particular device already came with a micro USB card in it that had the NVIDIA Jetson OS on it. In my initial test, I'm going to use the 2 amp micro USB cable that's inputting 5 volts into the Jetson. I'm going to run into some voltage problems a little bit later in the test. And I'll plug in a HDMI cable to a 23 inch monitor, which ran fine. This model of the Jetson Nano comes with 4 gigabytes. I'm also plugging wired mouse and keyboard into the Jetson so that I can see what's going on. As the used device I purchased came with the microSD pre-configured with a Jetpack, I was able to immediately boot it up. Very satisfying. A little computer just immediately outputted it to the monitor. I'm just going to connect it to the Rico Theta Z1 with a USB-C cable. The other end will go into the Rico Theta Z1. The Rico Theta X and the Z1 both have a USB-C connection. I also put on a USB Wi-Fi card onto it. And I'm going to install GPhoto 2, which I'm using to communicate with the camera over the USB cable using the MTP commands. When you connect the Rico Theta to the Jetson Nano with the USB cable, it's usually set to auto mount. And so you can manually unmount it. If you don't unmount it, I think the streaming and the USB API won't work. You can also disable auto mount. So there's a tool called Dconf Editor, which I'm installing here. And then with the Dconf Editor, you can then set the default system settings of the Ubuntu desktop to not mount the camera or the USB storage device by default. So in this case, there's still a way to mount it. Let's say that you, you mount a different camera, you do want to mount it to get the images from the camera. You can right click it and then mount it. So this will disable the auto mount but not the ability to, of course, mount it and get your, your pictures from it. So let's start up Dconf Editor after I installed it. And there's a little GUI here, and it tells you that you need to be careful because you could mess up your system, but we'll be bold and go forward. So I have it in my little document on our site here. So let's go dig down into org, GNOME, desktop. And then we'll look for the media handling and the media handling auto mount. So we'll just disable that. So in the future, if you plug in the camera, it won't automatically mount. The auto mount will disable the USB API in my experience. Let's go through a few of the GPhoto commands. So you can either use GPhoto 2 on the command line or PTP cam from lib PTP2. So the first uh, gphoto command here will set the camera to still image mode. The documentation is online, freely available on the Rico API GitHub repository. Uh, we're next going to use a gphoto specific command. That should be gphoto2, by the way. Uh, gphoto2 hyphen hyphen trigger capture. And it took the picture. Very good. Okay, let's see what we're running here. And if you do hyphen hyphen summary, um, you can see that I'm running the uh, Rico Theta X right now. We'll trigger the capture again. Let's 
So I'm going to set the camera to video mode. And I'm going to use the decimal 32770. Although the Recall API documentation does show the hex code, in my test using GPhoto 2, I had better results using the decimal value of the number. So you can just convert it over from the documentation. Once I set it to video mode, we can start the video. We can stop the video. And this is an interesting um, command here where I'm using the opcode plus the comma 0x FFFFFFF here. Now put the camera to sleep to save on the battery. And sometimes it does automatically go to sleep unless you set the uh, default auto sleep off. Then we can wake it up from sleep. Seems to be all re working fine. With the Recall Theta X, I did not have any problems with the USB API. So I'm going to try to install a G Streamer on my NVIDIA Jetson running a version of Ubuntu. I believe this is the Bionic Beaver equivalent. And we're going to grab a modified version of LibUVC with some of the specifications for the Theta, the Recall Theta camera inside of it. So we'll copy the repository of the modified version of LibUVC onto this NVIDIA Jetson Nano, and then we'll build it from source. So I'll just create a directory for development, and I'll clone down libuvc theta from GitHub. And then we're going to install libjpeg dev from the Ubuntu repository with sudo apt install libjpeg dev. These are the development libraries for JPEG that are needed by libuvc theta. So once we have the libjpeg in, we can then cd into the libuvc theta directory and we can build it. So let's first make a directory for the build, cd into that directory using cmake. We'll create the make file and then we'll make it. So now we'll make install. So the make did take a little bit of time. Now we have a new version, a modified version of libuvc shared library. So we'll make install into user local lib, and this should be in your LD config path, right? So it, it is by default, but when you run LD config to uh, let your libraries know, uh, the build system know that the library is there, uh, user local lib has to be in your your path of LD config. There's a sample program that we can also grab to uh, to test it out. First, we might make sure you run LD config as sudo unless you rebooted your computer, in which case it'll run at time of boot. And we'll use uh, GST theta UBC, which I have installed here. I'll try. Uh, to launch it, just so that we can see the, the live stream. This is at 4K, and the frame rate looks pretty low here. Uh, so I did find out, you see that in the upper right, it always says my system is throttled due to overcurrent. I went online, and it's actually probably the power supply 
that I'm using. Uh, you see how jerky it is here? I have another NVIDIA Jetson Power Supply. I used to have one. And um, in this test, I'm using the micro USB cable, which is only a max of two amps at five volts. I think it's not enough power here. So if I cut down the resolution to 2K uh, by specifying the 2K mode here, it's still, um, you know, it's better, but it's not as good as it could be. And it still says system throttle due to overcurrent in the upper right hand side of my screen. So th there's some, there's a bit of a problem here, but we'll test uh, OpenCV from Python anyway. I did install OpenCV Python prior to this, and we'll run a simple Python script for the frame resize just to make sure that OpenCV can work with the NVIDIA Jetson and the Ricoh Theta camera, and it does work fine. I do have another video of showing this running on a $269 Ryzen 5700U mini PC. Uh, that's all in cost for it. But um, it does run better on the NVIDIA Jetson Nano than is shown in this quick video here. It won't run on the Raspberry Pi, or at least it won't display it, although you could retransmit it. So from what I can tell from the NVIDIA forum here, this overcurrent error that I'm getting is due to a lower amount of current getting into the Jetson.